How's it going everybody? It is Friday the 2nd of June, which means here in about 15 minutes, it's time for me to hit the road to Sykeston, Missouri for the SEMO card show that takes place tomorrow. For those of you who don't know, the SEMO card show happens once a month, essentially. Uh, I'm very excited for this one, though it is four hours of driving one way and four hours back for a six hour show. I've heard that foot traffic is decent. And I'm hoping this show is profitable when you factor in gas, hotel, and I actually am bringing my own food so I do not have to worry about that. And the tables are fairly cheap. I think I'm gonna end up paying $40 for 12 feet of room. So I've got a couple of things I still need to pack. I have, this is my box for the case. I've got my food over here to the side, and then I've got my duffel over there. Uh, four hours to the hotel shouldn't be too bad. We're gonna get gas first. And then I will talk to you guys when we've kind of hit the road and we've packed up. So here we are in the car. In case you're wondering how much you have to bring to a one day show, I've got a backpack that's got wax and uh, supplies in it. That's my case cards that'll go in my cases. I don't want those sitting in my hot trunk overnight. Behind me, I've got my duffel with like my clothes and my Xbox. Yes, I'm bringing an Xbox. I'm getting there at two and not getting to go back out. So that's what we're gonna do there. I've got my dolly, I've got my food, and then I've also got a tripod down there for my Plinko board, and then everything else actually fit in the trunk. So we're gonna get gas here, we're gonna hop on the road, and hopefully it's just a smooth, quick drive. While we're on the way, I figured I'd give you guys some background about this show, other than what I've told you. Um, from what I've been told, and I may be repeating myself here, foot traffic seems to be moderately decent. As I've already stated, it's a six, seven hour show uh, in Sykeston, and I believe I might have even mentioned that there are 75 tables. But what I did not mention is the fact that I will be bringing far more than I brought to the last show. The last show I had four feet of room. Four feet isn't a lot to uh, have, it's not a lot to deal with. It barely fit Plinko and a pick through box and a case. This go around, I'm bringing two cases. I'm bringing my two to three last years of football and baseball, which will be our pick through boxes. Cards are gonna be 50 cents each. There's probably variations and stuff in there that I've missed, rookies in there that I've missed. Amongst other things, we are bringing back Plinko, which I'm very happy about. As I stated in my previous video, we did just as good as my case cards. And in both cases, we'll have our more expensive cards and then more of our like lower to mid-range cards. Nothing crazy this go around, nothing in the couple hundreds, but there are a few cards that are like two to three. Uh, that being said, I've already gotten some awesome recommendations of some podcasts to listen to on the drive through Twitter and uh, some antique shops as well as um, some other kind of cool areas to check out, including a decent burger joint. So I'm very excited to uh, get to the area. I'm very excited to check it out. Right now we are actually on two-lane highway, which is awesome because I thought we were going to be on busier roads like we were when we went to Kansas City to pick up that one collection. Regardless, we're still hitting it solo. We are not even close. We're three hours and 15 minutes out, but I'm just kind of vibing here. We've got 70 more miles on this road before we hit another. When I arrive, I'm thinking, um, just honestly take a nap <laughs> and uh, just see what else is going on. Probably do some gaming, uh, probably watch the Cardinals game because I haven't played in a couple days. And game two of the finals for the NBA isn't until Sunday, so I can't watch any of that. But I am excited. I am uh, thrilled for the opportunity. And right now we are actually $22 down. Filling the tank, or at least half the tank, starts us down in the red zone below zero as everything from today and uh, gas from tomorrow will as well. But that's what we're here for. We're here to have a good time. We're here to learn and to grow and to connect with people in the hobby. Uh, super excited to do things kind of like that. I uh, joined the SEMO car group and I was hoping there would be like a 
vendor dinner tonight or, you know, something where everybody could get together and just chat sports or talk sports, but I didn't see anything like that. I know 417 does something like that, and I've yet to make it out. So, anyways, 22 in the red, six, seven-hour show, decent foot traffic, and like I said, I'm just really looking forward to this, and I will talk to you guys when I get to the hotel. So I'm at the hotel now, it's very, very bare bones, and I've got the Xbox hooked up. However, I had to go buy my own HDMI cord because this TV didn't come with it. Plus, I decided I was going to get myself a pizza. I know I repeatedly said, I'm not going to buy food. Uh, here I am. I bought a pizza. It was $7. It'll last me all day and night and maybe part of tomorrow on my way home. So, hotel pizza HDMI cord add-on another $80 so we're now 102 in the hole and uh, we just keep chugging along we're gonna watch the Cardinals game here shortly and just chill tonight all right so it's Tuesday the day this video is coming out and I do apologize for the poor video quality my camera something's going on with it but I wanted to give you guys a wrap-up it's been a couple days just like last time and that is because it is honestly a little exhausting to do a show and drive eight hours and drive back. I didn't sleep well. My hotel definitely could have been better. So down the line, I've learned the effort to put into a better hotel and maybe 10 or $20 is worth it because I did not sleep. There are a lot of loud cars, a lot of loud people. And in the end, it just wasn't worth it. But I wanted to wrap up the show with you guys. It wasn't the best show, honestly. It's a one day, six hours, so you can't expect the world. Um, at the end of the day, I made about 320. Uh, subtract the 120, you're making 200. So that kind of sucks. But I'm going to factor in also trade. Uh, I do want to let you guys know that the Relic Box Plinko made about the same amount, uh, which is ironic. They both made about 70 or 20 ish percent. Uh, my bargain boxes, where people could pick out cards for 50 cents a piece, made about 20. So that only made 6%, but it was worth it to bring them in my mind. And then other made 160, which includes wax, mystery bags, and things like that made about 160. So all in all, not the worst show, honestly. And I was happy to meet all the people I did. There were a lot of grandparents there for their kids. There were a lot of kids there that knew what they were doing when it came to trades. And I did want to go into some trades I made. So the first thing I did actually was there's not a lot of wax around, but somebody had some legacy. I got a Dare to Tear, pulled a Derek Carr, numbered to 10. I don't know if this camera can pick it up. I'm using the one on my computer. But it is a 10. It's like a $50 card. Uh, I'm not including that as a pickup, but that's something that I pulled. Um, kind of going to start with my easier ones. Uh, Chad Johnson, $2 relic. I'll probably throw that in my $5 section or on my $5 Plinko. Tom Seaver, Relic. I traded this for any $2 Relic the uh, kid I wanted, or the kid wanted to trade for it. So I was very happy with that. Uh, and then on top of that, I traded the dirt from George Washington's home. It's only a $5 card on eBay for this really nice dual patch of Justin Schultz and Andrew Ference. If you guys are hockey guys, let me know. I can't find comps on this, so that won't be included in the comps as well. Uh, the next trades I actually do recall, we've got a Trevor Lawrence Optic Rookie Phenoms Relic. I've got a price on it. Uh, it's about a $25, $20 card. I've stuck a 30 on it for down the line. Traded my red, white, and blue Jamar Chase for that. Uh, this is a card I'm hoping to just get rid of before the season starts. I've already had a couple of people on Facebook reach out about it. Uh, the next one was I was able to trade for this Trevor Lawrence Select Rookie Prism die cut club level silver. Uh, I've stuck a 40 on it. These regularly do about 25. So I expect these to go up. I mean, it's silver. It's a good product. It's a quarterback. It's a rookie. On top of that, I got a Justin Fields rookie, a Justin Herbert rookie, which honestly, that's like a $7 card uh, last comp. And then a picket, which was like a buck. Uh, I'll probably end up at some point just doing all my pickets together to get rid of those. 
Um, I got about $40 in trade, and I traded an Aaron Rodgers rookie I bought on eBay for $20 and stuck a $40 on. So that's not too bad. But my favorite card I picked up was when I went to Kansas City and I got that collection. As you guys know, I spent $200 on the collection, and it's already turned a profit for me. Uh, I traded away my Luka PSA rookie and my Kelsey score PSA rookie. I think they were both like 9.5s, plus like 50 in cash for a pop one. None higher. PSA 9 out of 10. 2020 Panini Contenders Patrick Mahomes Building Blocks. And I've kind of stuck some stickers on it. I've had a $200 offer on that so far. And I'm honestly, I was looking for more like 250 275 uh, I kind of got ghosted after I told them that like we could work something out. And they didn't respond. And even right now, I'm like kind of checking my messages to see... Um, if, yeah, they've read it, they didn't respond. So this is something I can hold on to and probably sell for what I want when the season comes around. We're less than 100 days away at this point from the regular season. So I'm pretty happy about that. And like I said, it is number to 10. I'll see if you guys can see it right in there. Yeah, this camera isn't as good as my other one. But that is it. All in all, um, it wasn't per se for me worth the effort to drive eight hours, stay in a terrible hotel for a six-hour show. The people were nice. They were friendly. Some of them packed up two hours early, which helped me make more money. And then on top of that, the trades were there. No one had a Plinko or a dice roll or a spin the wheel or anything like that. So being able to be the only one that had that as well was huge. I wish I could have uh, made more trades, made more sales, but it was cool to sell some wax. It was cool to see people try out the mystery packs, talk about the mystery packs. And it was really cool, honestly, to have my best show for when it came to traits. All in all, people knew what they were doing out in Sykeston, and it was very, you know, thrilling to see. Now, to hear down the line next weekend, and it's Tuesday now, we're going to go to Bentonville, Arkansas for GG2. It's going to be our biggest show yet. I think it's 75 tables. They've got grading services there. Uh, I know Mojo's been there before. Um, so I'm really excited for this opportunity. And right now, I'm just hoping in my mind to make like maybe five off of that. Chris and I will probably drive separate. We're staying in a and b I am again going to bring food and hopefully I stick to it this time. Uh, if I eat out once, it's no big deal, but I am going to pack a cooler just full of snacks and food and, you know, things like that for breakfast and so on and so forth. But that is the end of this video, guys. I know I really didn't capture a lot of the show itself. With being the only one there, being a first-timer, I didn't want to film unfamiliar faces, unfamiliar people, and so on and so forth. I did not feel that that was the right move to do. So hopefully here down the line, I can capture more of that. Right now, it's not something I'm comfortable with. But, you know, I want to take more pictures and maybe trades and things like that. Like I said, I was having issues with the camera. I did have film from just my setup and what the room looked like and so forth. But that couldn't be involved due to that. That is it for this video, guys. All in all, we did about $660 in trade-ups and in cash and I was very happy with that. We're going to leave Friday for this show, come back Sunday from the show, and hopefully it's a good time and we'll just see what happens. It's gonna be our biggest one yet. Thank you all so much for watching as always. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We do giveaways all the time when we hit milestones on this channel. The next one will probably be when we hit our next like 50. So I think we're at like eight something, so the next one would be 850. Thank you guys for watching. If you want more things involved in this video, more behind the scenes, let me know down in the comment section. But that is all from me. Thank you again for watching. And I will talk to you all when Cardboard Talks comes out in two days.